Well, good evening. How are you guys doing? Yes? You showed up. If you didn't know why you showed up, tonight's going to be fun. It's going to be good. I figured I'd get going while these, uh, these guys are... It's like a circus behind me. It's, like, it's going quick. Hey, um, I'm, uh, I'm thankful for this conversation today. I'm, um, how many guys know that it's, it is, it's actually vital for the church to be a part of this conversation? Do you know that? It's, uh, it's, it is vital. It is important. Um, and I'm thankful that we attend a house that doesn't shy away from a difficult conversation, but leans in a little bit more. Uh, and tries to handle things with just grace and truth, what you heard Pastor Josh uh, talk about on Sunday. Um, but with that, I do not have a lot of time tonight. Uh, so I'm going to jump right in. I want to leave plenty of room for our panel here at the end. I'm really excited for that. Um, but I, I'm going to, if you'll allow me, I'm going to go fast. I'm going to dive in and hopefully set a little bit of a foundation uh, for our conversation today. If you're ready, say amen. 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 All right. Um, tonight I want to challenge uh, and I want to encourage you, us, me, as, as individuals. As individuals made in the image of God. That's, that's powerful and it's purposeful language. It's, we are made after the image of God. We're made in his likeness. And here's the thing, like we as humans are made from God and we're made for God. We have a heart and we have a soul and we have a body and a mind that can feel all sorts of things in all sorts of ways at all sorts of times. Yes? Yes? We're not simple creatures. (laughs) All the married men in the room say amen to that. Don't say amen. (laughs) But with that body, with that body, it it comes desires. There there comes inclinations. There's, There's wants within that. And the world would say, well, do whatever you want with your body. It's yours anyway. Or a misinterpretation of Scripture would say, it's okay, go for it. Grace will be there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> Keep this energy, please. So, um, so tonight, my overarching question for us is, how do we stay faithful to the end? How do we stay faithful to the end? How do you, father, mother, young person, Advanced in years, person? I never know how to say that. How do you finish the race strong? How do you finish the journey and the race in which the Lord has called you to well and with success? That is, it's a valid question. I think it's a good question for us to ask. Um, 2 Timothy 4.7, Paul has a little bit uh, to say about this. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. A little little history lesson, if you'll indulge me this evening. The day was nine, oh, sorry, the day was December 8th, 1952. Don't raise your hand if you're alive. The, the day was December 8th, 1952. Culture was vibrant post-World War II. The economy was booming. Suburbia was being established. And we saw the emergence of youth culture and rock and roll begin to come on the scene. A little bit. Television replaced radio as the dominant broadcast median 
of the 1950s and took over home entertainment. But little did we know that a cultural uproar of indecency would be displayed on national television. On this day, December 8th, 1952, the TV show, I Love Lucy, showed two married individuals sitting in the same bed together, leaving room for ambiguity only to the indecent mind that they may have even shared a bed together for the whole night. <laughs> Can you imagine the nerve, the nerve to show a married couple fully clothed with separate blankets and sitting upright in bed together on national TV? <laughs> Saying obviously a little tongue cheek here, sarcasm is my first language. You see, up until this point, we never saw a married couple share a bed together. There was a code of decency, an actual code, a code of decency that was shared across all major broadcasting networks that portraying a man and a wife in the same bed together was a line that could never be crossed. A select few may remember that, but I'm not, once again, don't raise your hand. You may give away your age at that point. Um, but fast forward to today. We no longer live in a time when one of the biggest uproars in media society was seeing two individuals who were actually married in real life sitting right side up in a bed. Oh, no, that's, uh, that seems to be comical today to what is available. Friends, church, unhealthy sexual sexuality comes through almost any front nowadays. We don't have to look for it. Instead, it comes and it seeks us out. I watched a nostalgic movie on Disney, uh, Disney Plus, two weeks ago with my three-year-old son, we were enjoying it because it was one of my favorites growing up. Um, and I just got to be honest, like there's some things that hit me in it. During one of the ads on a kid's profile, mind you, so restrictions are within that, a kid's profile on Disney portrayed, this is just as someone who's just stating what I saw. During one of the ads on as I was watching a movie with my three-year-old son, portrayed two full-grown men, shirtless, lying on top of one another to promote a sexual performance-enhancing drug. And that's not even the worst of it, guys. <laughs> I can go on and on about children's television shows that portray grooming behavior to condition my son to think that behavior and relationships are normal and okay. And I'm not here to even talk about parenting this evening. That conversation will come in a few weeks. My question for us and for me is, how can we finish strong even as adults? It's difficult to turn on any sort of media, whether it's books, movies, TV, social media, news platforms, etc. It's all there, available, all day, alone, all the time. So, or my question, or in other words... In the middle of frustration, when we feel bombarded from every angle, how do we preserve our integrity as people who love Jesus, as Christ's followers? Not just what our children are viewing, but actually asking the question, what am I taking in? What am I viewing? What am I looking at? Even when my children are not in the room. I'm glad you asked. 1 Thessalonians 4, 1 through 8. Uh, Pastor Josh referred to it on Sunday, and I'm coming back to it. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. And I would say more and more and more. 
For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God. Your sanctification is the will of God. That you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passions of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one transgress or wrong his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is an avenger in all things. As we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you, for God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness. Therefore, whoever disregards this, disregards not man, but God, who gives his Holy Spirit to you. So, with the question, how can we maintain our integrity? And I'm not, and I want to be very clear even in my language and what I'm referring to. I'm not referring to even obvious right from wrong. I'm not referring to the obvious glorification of pornography that goes on in the world today. I'm talking about the little things. The little things as well. That want to slowly itch away, moment by moment, swipe by swipe, movie by movie, scroll by scroll, at the convictions of the Holy Spirit and what He's leading you into. Friends, we need to watch out for this. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a slow conditioning of the heart. It's a slow deformation. And as we heard on Sunday, we're either being conformed or we are being transformed. There is no middle ground. So the call, if I can, is for those who, three part here, for those who are in their advanced years, I need to talk to some people to give me language on that. <laughs> I encourage you. Mature adults. mature adults. Thank you very much. <laughs> Leave it to Jim Batten. Thank you. For those who are mature adults in their years, I encourage you. <laughs> I encourage you. Here's, there's the shawl. Here's the call. Here's the challenge. I encourage you as mature adults, I encourage you to challenge and to confront middle of life adults to strive for a higher standard. We need you. Like we, we actually, I need you. We need you. Parents in the room, I urge you personally to live a life of holiness that sets an example for your children. And for individuals of various ages, I encourage you to ponder and walk the blameless paths empowered by God's grace. Because friends, there is a path. There is a race that is set before you to finish strong. And with that, I am painfully aware of even my own shortcomings. What we now need more than ever, I'm telling you, church, what we now need more than ever in our homes and in our personal lives are individuals with an aggressive approach like we see in the life of Nehemiah who took on the role of protector and builder on the walls of his own home. Wants to stand on the wall and fight the best fight, the fight of purity in the home and not allow cultural pressures of this day and age to, to even have an opening in our own lives, in our marriages, and to our children. And with that, I would say, even with all humility, as we need Nehemiahs on the wall of, to guard our homes for purity, with all humility, Instead, we have far too many individuals letting in demonic, pornographic, sexual, perversive media in the back door while portraying a strong front, not thinking that anyone would notice or can notice because it is done behind closed doors or broadcasted on TV in our living room. We need the holy fear of the Lord on our lives, knowing that one day when this race of life is over, 
I will stand before Jesus. I will. I will stand before Jesus and give an account to the things as a father that I allowed into my home and into my family's life in the most obvious and inadvertent ways. I will give an account for that. The call, the standard, is holiness. It is still purity. It hasn't changed and it never will. So come what may, my house will serve the Lord. That's the stance that we have to take. There is no other stance. Come what may, culture may change, my house will serve the Lord. I don't mean to come off aggressive in any way tonight, but I have to say, we do not live in the 1950s anymore, and our greatest concern is I love Lucy. This is 2024. And our attacks are coming on every front into our minds, our bodies, and our souls. Not just to adults, but there is a strategic targets being fired at our children starting at a very young age. The target, the aim, is conditioning and the dissolution of our convictions. There is very clear right and wrong regarding what is sin and what is not. Beyond that, there is a place for every believer where the Holy Spirit will lead you into and provide a grace for the convictions that he is calling you to live out. It may seem crazy to some, but the Holy Spirit provides a grace to live out and walk the path that he's inviting you into. I want my convictions to flow from my relationship with Jesus and his guiding voice, not from what cultural, well, not from what culture deems permissible or acceptable, but what is beautiful and loving in the eyes of God. That is my true north. This is our standard. He is our standard. Before we go to the panel, I want to end with this. It's a it's a psalm that has helped me through a lot through, my, through the years. If you're here for our Healthy Sexuality series a year and a half ago, um, you're familiar with my story. I won't belabor it now, but this is a beautiful psalm that you can say over yourself and over your home. Psalms 101, 1 through 4. I will sing of steadfast love and justice. To you, O Lord, I will make music. I will ponder the way that is blameless. Oh, when will you come to me? I will walk with integrity of heart within my home. I will not set before my eyes anything that is worthless. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. A perverse heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. I will know nothing of evil. There's a call. How will you walk with integrity in the journey that he's calling you to? Yeah. Panel members, come on up. We're going to have a good uh, we're going to have some good conversations and hopefully we have plenty of microphones up here. We do. Um, yeah, welcome our panel, our panel as they come. Yeah. Can you guys see the people, the hunk of men in the back? Can you see them? Yeah, I was like... <laughs> I would feel the same way. Uh, so, uh, guys, real quick, uh, maybe go through uh, name, and I don't know what else beyond that. Uh, your name, yeah. Let's I'm just... Diego. I'm Cassidy. I'm Jonah. Chris. Amy. Oh, flick that, <laughs> flick that on. Yeah. Amy. Yeah, so we're going to jump right into the conversation because I want to have, have plenty of time. Oh, look, I did get it in. Okay. Um, I want to have plenty of time to have this conversation. I think it's a really important one. Um, each one of these people up here, 
are just honestly just amazing people. Um, but just embody, I think, a lot of this conversation uh, really well. Uh, they're all perfect in everything that they do, um, especially Chris. Uh, and so, yeah. um, but I, I honestly just want to jump, jump right into a few questions that we, we had. And then in addition, uh, you can whip out your phones. There's a QR code up on the screen too. If there's any questions that you, you feel like you, would, you want to ask uh, and be a part of the conversation, we welcome that as well. But guys, I want to jump right in. I want to, I want to jump right in specifically to that the conversation of, of Nehemiah on the wall, the conversation of like leading in a way in which I will stand on the front lines of my home and of my own, even not just my home, but my personal life. How does this like play out in your own life? What does it look like to be a watchman on the wall? Uh, Chris, do you want to start us off? Yeah, so I think two words come to mind, and I'll say what they mean to me a little bit, is one is just relationship, and second is repentance. Um, for me, it's definitely first and foremost relationship with God in a personal level. Um, you know, I, I think that a lot of times when we define holiness, we think about more of the things we don't do and I think it's good to think about, like, what is holiness? Like, if somebody looked at me and said, that's a holy man, I don't want it to be because he doesn't cuss and doesn't watch Yellowstone. Sorry, everyone. But yeah. if that's I don't you. don't smoke, but, drink, and chew. You know, or, yeah, like, because yeah. I don't do that. I don't want it to be because of what I don't do as much as what I do do. Yeah. And so I think that if, you know, as I think about the things that are tempting or the things that I have to find myself repent on the most, you know, and what does it look like to live the Christian life and to be faithful? I think that if my love for God is big, then his commands are not burdensome. Yeah. But if my love for God is weak, I mean, I think about if my love for my wife is weak, I don't really want to make the bed and do the dishes or anything else. I kind of want you to just do the things for me. But I love her so much. Don't, like, hold this over my head. But I love her, you know... <laughs> My love for her is big enough to where I want to do what I can to, like, stoke that and to, lo to make that big. So I think relationship with God is, I mean, it's the centerpiece of it all. And I, I would say equally, not equally maybe, but so important is relationship with my family, like to lead the family is because, I mean, I look at my son who's 13, 14 and my daughter who's 15 and honestly, there's even a little fear in that. I want to hand them down something that's worth having. Yeah. And so relationship and then repentance. And it's just, I mean, Amy said this when we were talking earlier, quick repentance. It's just like, I can't tell you how many times I repent to my family. I mean, you would be like, why are you on the stage? Um, I just, when I screw up, when I mess up with what I say, what I do, how I act, whatever that is, which is not holy, if you will, when I do that, it's just, it's repentance. So quickly repenting to the Lord and to my family. It's beautiful. Uh, Jonah, what about, what about you? I think like, even when I'm thinking of a man, Nehemiah, I think of him as your stature. Like <laughs> someone who's like holding a broad, like just a two-armed sword in one hand. I don't know. Somebody who can do that. Uh, <laughs> But, like, maybe share a little bit about, like, I know, I know some, but, like, if you would, like, share a little bit about your own personal journey with what does it look like to have safeguards in place, like, boundaries in place, and your journey on this. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I think it's really easy as Christians to forget that this is a war. Like, we're under attack all the time. Like, the spirit of the devil is to come and kill you, to kill, steal, and destroy. This is not a game. This is not a joke. So for me in my house, like, I've taken the position of like, hey, I'm not going to give the devil an inch. I'm not going to give him a foothold. Because if I give him an inch, he's going to take a mile. Yeah. If I give him a mile, he's coming for my life. He's yeah. coming for my kids. Like, this is, this is really serious for me and for our family. So we do some things at our house that might be really extreme. But <laughs> quite frankly, I think the world needs a bit more extreme. I think the world needs men especially to stand up and put a flag in the ground and say, enough's enough. We're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to allow 
even the smallest thing into our home because it will impact your home. It changes the atmosphere of things. My desire is for my home to be a place that the spirit of the Lord wants to come and dwell and just totally radically alter my family. I can't, I'm not confident that he's gonna want to come in that level if I'm choosing to be an unholy father, an unholy husband. I have a call and a duty to lead my family. And I think practically, like just (laughs) quoting Jocko Willink, uh, discipline equals freedom, especially with sexual immorality. For me personally, in my, in my walk, I went from almost a decade of pornography addiction. And if it wasn't for really intense, extreme action that I took and discipline, combined with a lot of repentance and a really radical encounter with God, which is a story for a different day, I would be a very different person today. So I would encourage everyone here, like, do not forget don't sweat the small stuff, or excuse me, sweat the small stuff. <laughs> you, you don't want to give an inch to someone who's trying to kill you. Like, that's what you're fighting against. Would you, okay, so he's like, I, I know a little bit of your story. Would you actually mind sharing a little bit of what you, like what you just said? Those extreme measures that are, that you have taken in your own life and even for your home as well. Because I, I think like practically th- that's yeah. helpful for us. Yeah. Yeah. So like just as an example, I mean, everyone has this today, right? This is like Fort Knox. My phone is, I cannot get at anything. And that's in, very intentional. I can't download apps. I turn that ability off. Um, I have all these parental controls set up on my phone. My wife is like my gatekeeper on my phone. Husbands, if your wife does not have full access to your phone, you're doing something wrong. You, you've got to make sure that your spouse is on board because my wife, she fights with me, and I love that about her. So just, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't stress enough, especially if you're coming from a place of having a lot of struggle in the past. Like the same reason an alcoholic doesn't go to a bar and hang out. You don't do that. So you have to take really practical steps, even if they're quote-unquote extreme. I mean, another example, like, for example, like TV shows and movies, even kids stuff, as you were talking about. I don't allow that in my house, period. Just for context, we don't even have a TV. Is that extreme? Yeah. But I would say, good. It needs to be extreme. Now, we still watch things with our family. I mean, we have a computer, and so we, a lot of times, will watch something, but we're very intentional that what we put in front of them is not going to have even just a shred of sexual morality because that is not something I'm allowing in my house. So, I Love Lucy is out. Like, <laughs> I Love Lucy, gone. That's not, it's gone. After today, it's done. Yeah. I can't help it, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Cass, I, okay, so, in, uh, Cass, I'm interested in, I'm interested in hearing from you, too. Um, you guys are, have baby, how, how old is baby Samuel now? He's eight months. Eight months old. And so, I would say, I'm, I'm interested in hearing from even the perspective of a mother. Um, in the very beginning stages of this, um, and thinking through and mapping out, like, these are the safeguards that I want to put into place. This is, this is as a woman, this is as a Nehemiah on the wall. Uh, what does that look like for you as a mom? That's really such a good question. I, I really have to bring it back, though, to, like, when I was just a daughter um, and a little sister and nothing else. Um, since I was a little girl, like, I always loved singing. You might have seen seen me on stage um, leading worship and, or, or playing piano. Um, that's something I've always loved to do. And that a lot of times just came with being on stage um, a lot and performing a lot um, and feeling even like I was good at what I did. And I was encouraged in that a lot, which I'm so grateful for people who um, encouraged me in that. Um, but Unfortunately, it became actually who I was rather than something that like the Lord gave me. Um, Instead of holding it like a gift, it became everything that I was. And if I wasn't good at that, 
um, if someone maybe didn't think I was a good singer or if somebody was better than me, then that was a big problem. <laughs> um, so I, I say all that because where you find your identity, where I found my identity, it was very fragile. It was shakable. Um, and I think it's really important that from a young age, um, and this is what I will try to do, instill in my son what I, I wish I had learned earlier, uh, but I'm so grateful that the Lord has like uh, taught me, taught me this now, that um, learning my identity as a daughter of the king, knowing that like who he is doesn't change. And so I get to like partake in that unchangeable character of God um, and the, the creator, right? Like he, he made me, he knew like what he was doing when he gave me that gift um, or anything else. And um, so, yeah, just wrapping all that up, like finding my identity as a, uh, as a, as a creation of the unchangeable God whose love doesn't change, whose mercy doesn't change, things of that sort. That's what I'm um, going to try to instill with our son, even um, in what we named him. We named him Samuel, and I love um, the name Sam. Okay, this is not against you if your name's Sam, but we call him Samuel like he's not Sam to us. Um, because his name means a lot to us. And so if, like, we get a lot of attention in stores these days. People just love babies. <laughs> like, like crazy people love babies. Um, especially the um, women who are uh, mature in years, right? Um, <laughs> we get a lot of grandma attention. Uh, and we love it. Um, but sometimes uh, people will just say things, you know. Sometimes people will be like, oh, I, he just spoiled rotten. Or, you know, that, you know, if he's crying, oh, he's just a cranky little boy. And if I have the chance, I'll be like, he's not cranky. He's just tired today, you know. Um, because it's important to me what I'm speaking over my son because that's going to be forming um, a yeah. portion of his identity. Yeah. Um, so constantly speaking life over my son, um, letting him know that he's going to have desires, but he's not his desires. Yeah. He's going to have temptations, but those are not his. Like, those are not his thoughts. Those are from the enemy who, mm -hmm. who doesn't want him to, to succeed and to have life abundance. So, yeah, wrapping all that up, identity is huge, huge, huge. Um, it was for me just speaking, speaking yeah. the life of God over them. I love that. I think um, it makes me think of Jesus in the desert, right, where temptation came in the same conversation that undermining identity hmm. came. So, like the enemy said, if you're the son of God, turn these stones into bread and then jump from the temple, etc. bow down. So like do this to prove. And so I think that obviously Jesus was tempted in all things. Perfect. Yeah. Um, but in this conversation of sexuality, you really, you really want to know who you are to fight well. And I think that's a great starting place, like mm. Psalm 139, identity. Um, even when we're talking about integrity and what you do within your house, that's where identity is formed. Yeah. It's in the secret place. It's when no one is watching. It's, so, so everything matters, right? Like your sexuality is not outside of your identity. Like, yeah. so I just feel like even being on this stage, like, I just sense the, the fear of the Lord in all of this. Um, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is clean. In Psalm 19. Like, I, I believe, you know, the Bible says that, that the Holy Spirit is the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So I just, I just, in that same note, I would just encourage all of us to be tender to the Holy Spirit and to the fear of the Lord. That will keep us clean. Yeah. In yeah. secret 
in public and in regards to our identity too. Mm. So I just yeah. wanna say like a hundred percent finding like identity in in the creator is the fear of the Lord. Yeah. Because that's that's what defines like your your motives, right? Mm. If I'm if I'm concerned only about the Lord's eyes, like he's the only one I'm wanting to please. Yeah. But if I'm concerned about somebody else's eyes, that 100% affects my motives, and it might even be at the expense of somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, fear of the Lord is it's everything, and it is the ultimate thing that will form your identity into what like the Lord has designed you to be. Yeah. That's yeah. not being afraid of the Lord, right? It's just being, right. being very aware that like your creator is watching you. Yeah. Yeah. My <laughs> favorite, there's... my favorite children's song. Oh, yeah. be I mean, I'm, I'm seeing serious. I, I was singing this with Malachi not too long ago. Like, and it would actually behoove us as adults to remember this. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Be careful, little eyes, what you see. Because the father up above is looking down in love. Yes. So be careful, little eyes, what you see. And then ears, hands, be careful little hands what you do. Be careful little mind what you think. Because the Father, like, we should sing that over ourselves every morning, you know? Charity, can we add that to the album? Okay, no. Tyler's yes. Okay, good. Uh, no, so... I think the, the holy, like that holy conversation around the holy fear of the Lord, a, a, a topic that comes to mind when I think of the holy fear of the Lord is, is holiness um, as well. And I feel like when, even when we begin to talk about holiness, it comes with, Amy, I'm looking at you because you're going to answer this, okay? Um, when we, when we think of, of the term holiness, it comes sometimes with some different connotations and maybe in with a little bit of, of, bit of baggage uh, to think that like, oh, I'll never live up to this. Shame follows that for me. Um, and I'm a, so I, I just want to like, would you, would you maybe speak on that a little bit? I know that you're like, you like holiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is like my favorite topic, guys. Yeah. So we are able to walk out fully before him. And when we know him, it's not scary. When we know him, it's not shameful. When we, when we know him, we get to walk in the beautifulness of holiness. And so whether you're married or single, I'm the single person on this stage, by the way. Um, whether you're single or you're married, you're called to holiness is the same. Your call right. to purity is the same. That's right. Holiness, you know, purity is a natural outflowing of holiness, right? That's the same with the Lord. Like, his purity is a natural outflowing of his holiness, and the same is true of us. And so, 
So whether married or single, the call is the same, but the expression is different. Hmm. And so if you are a married person, your call to purity is expressed through faithfulness. My call to purity as a single person is expressed through abstinence. The call is the same. The expressions are different. That's good. I like that point. Yeah. Sorry, I just, no, I'm talking out loud here. You're good, I like you're that good, point. You're good, you're good. And so, to be clear, for the single people in the room, we are not in the minor leagues of what we're talking about tonight. Yeah. Like, we're not. You're not in the minor leagues of sexuality. You're not in the minor leagues of spirituality. You aren't going to graduate to another level when you get married. It's just the expression changes. Yeah. That's what happens, right? And so everything that we're talking about tonight on guarding your home, I'm not protecting children. I'm protecting myself. Yeah. The, it's, the principles are the same. Um, and so we get to be fully alive and fully in our humanity right now regardless of your relationship status. And you are called to the same expression of purity regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> So I think along the conversation of like, what does holiness look like in the conversation of sexuality? Anybody can answer this. All right. What, what is, type of sexuality? Like sex or like I'm a man or a woman or relationships? What do you mean by that? All Which of direction the above. you want to go D, there? D, all of the above. <laughs> Let's go to the first one. Sex? Sex. This is a sexuality series. Okay, yeah. Um, I mean, I definitely think, so what does holiness look like in that realm? I definitely think in our day and age, it's absolutely guarding your heart because it's the wellspring of life. It's the wellspring of your marriage. It's all those things. And so I think that you know, you can innocently be, you know, I do a lot of work on social media. You can be on social media innocently doing something and all of a sudden these images come up or these things come up. That's not like, it's not like pornography, but it might as well be. It's like a Maxim magazine on your phone. 100%. And I think that what do you do in that moment? Like, and how do you handle that? And even the things you allow on your phone. Um, So I think the things that you look at I think that those can, I've learned this about myself, the things that you look at can stoke the way you look at your wife and the way mm. it can make you look at your wife more like something for you for sex, quite honestly. Yeah. Instead of being, sex being the culmination of intimacy, it can, it can be something I want. And that's not what holiness of sex is like. And yeah. so I think that what you look at, I just, uh, what you look at can impact the way you look at your spouse. Yeah. What you watch on TV, because, you know, on TV, everybody wakes up in the morning and they got like makeup on and lipstick and they look like they just Jonah. got down with glamour shots. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so I just think that it creates these images in our minds and these realities, these magazine cover. Th- so I think you have to constantly it's just, it is, it's watching, what am I taking in? It's, it is constantly pressing. So is there this pressing back that is being done? And so I don't know if I really answered that, That's but. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I think the way that I look at this is, you know, sexual morality is like the gateway drug to a lot of brokenness. And I think especially in the context of, um, you know, our discussion tonight, it's like, it skews how you view what sex was meant to be. Um, And, you know, when I was going through what I did back when I was single, (laughs) it it skewed a lot of things. Um, Thankfully, you know, I found a a wife who's just phenomenal. If you know her, you you know her, but... um, yeah, that's, that's what I would say. It's, it skews everything. So it's really important to make sure that you do guard your heart like you were saying. Because the way that I look at this is how does stuff get into your heart in the first place? Right? It's through the gateway 
of your life, which is the gateway of your eyes yeah. and the gateway of your ears, what you hear, what you see. So if you can train yourself enough to be very intentional about what you allow, in, uh, allow to come in those gateways, your heart is going to be a lot better for it, and you're not going to skew God's original design for sex. Yeah. And I, I think with this, like, one thought or, like, one question that we get pretty regularly um, begins something along the lines of this. Is it okay? Yada, yada, yada. Is it okay to do whatever? And I think that's just fundamentally the wrong question to ask. Not a bad thing if you ask the question. <laughs> but I think it's the wrong intention. Because multi I think like what I have found multiple times is like, well then, is an answer really going to be sufficient if you receive it and it's right? Or, is, or are we looking for some sort of moral justification to still be within the grace of the Lord and do the things we want to do? Does that make sense? Yeah. We touched on this already, but I, I can't, I can get away from it. I really believe that when it comes to our heart, there's something that we desperately need, and it is the fear of the Lord. Um, because it's one thing for you to just fear sin, which we should. Yeah. But to fear the Lord, you will fear sin too, because sin will separate you from him. The fear of the Lord is not being afraid of him. We said that. It is being terrified of being away from him. Yeah. And so if you fear him, you will fear sin. But if you just fear sin, then your eyes are simply on that which is inferior. And then we wonder why we keep spinning and just trying to resist. But really what causes us to do that is our relationship with Jesus. It is this beautiful thing called sanctification, which is the will of God for us, which happens when we... Fear the Lord. So yeah. it, is, it is a circle, but it, it, it's a relational circle yeah. that enables us. Yeah. Um, and and when, when Jesus says, be holy as I am holy, or sanctification is the will of God for you, he would never will something for us who it, that is unattainable. Yeah. And I think that sometimes we feel like that's the case. I've had conversations, and you know, I'm young adult pastor and 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 honestly i i just want to say this over the room and maybe you have dealt with a desire and you've been resisting that desire i'll say because it is sin and i'll say keep resisting it like submit to god resist the devil and he'll flee from you keep resisting stand firm but i also want to encourage you god is able and powerful enough to change your desires because of his nature so stay there but believe that he will change your desires. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, Where did, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. I think something that's important from a single perspective is that sex is a metaphor. And marriage is a metaphor for intimacy. Come on. And as single people, not even just single people, but I'm speaking for myself, we get so distracted by the metaphor that we miss the point of the metaphor. Like we miss it, right? And so often in church, especially marriage is such an idol. It just is. And we miss the point of the metaphor, which is intimacy. There is no marriage in heaven. Why? Because perfect covenant union with the Father exists. And we have that opportunity as single people now to step into that because we don't get to partake in the metaphor yet. Maybe not ever. Maybe not yet. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it is a metaphor. And it's not plan B. If you're single, it's not plan B for you. Um, you won't graduate to another level and then suddenly arrive. Um, if that were the case, Jesus' human expression would have been found lacking. And it wasn't. So our expression of sexuality may change but it doesn't mean it's better and so um, single sexuality is a deficient sexuality 
And if God commanded it, if God commanded absence, which he did, then it is good and it is possible. It is good for you. It is for your good. And to step outside of that is destruction for you. I, I want to, I have maybe a few more, two more questions, maybe. Um, can, Aaron, can I just say something to you? No. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry, go ahead. No, just kidding. I love Aaron's jokes, aren't they so funny? <laughs> I really do. <laughs> Aaron's my bro. Um <laughs> I just, I, I kind of backtracking a little bit when we were talking about that question, like, is it okay? I think something that's freed me so much when I came out of the fear of man, um, not that I don't ever deal with that, being real, but I can truly say, like, my eyes are so much more concerned about the Lord's eyes. Uh, but when... Uh, when that kind of became my reality, that question changed, you know, and not just in sexuality, but um, in in every area of my life from is it okay to like, God, what is your design? What is your design? What is your intention? Yeah, what pleases you? Uh, and I, there's so much more fulfillment when we come into alignment with the design um, and not only uh, fulfillment, but and just being like, I don't want to assume anything is is obvious in this room or or common knowledge. I, I truly believe that this goes into sexual identity orientation. Um, the design of God has been has been laid out in the word of God between one man and one woman. Um, and when we step into that alignment for marriage, um, it becomes a thousand times more fulfilling. Um, and so, yeah, just I just felt like that was important to touch on a little bit. Like that question, I feel like changes to to what is your what is your intention, Lord, and what is what is your design for this? Yeah. One thing I want to discuss and and touch on as well is. On the topic of holiness and in the topic of, I think when we look at holiness, we looked at like it's a striving for a perfection. And sometimes there's a falling short of that. Sometimes there's a, I made a mistake. I, I know I wasn't supposed to do that, but I did. What then? Yeah. Like... What is the correct response where, like, I think even in my own life where shame ruled my life for so long, and it wasn't until I stepped outside of that that I actually found freedom. So how then do we do that? Like, I made a mistake. What, what's next? Jonah, I'm going to look at you. I'll let Chris go first. All right, Chris, go first. <laughs> Well, I think one thing about holiness that I think it's probably good to say is, you know, we are not in a state of holiness up here right now. Um, You know, we're holy as God declares us as holy, but holiness is something that you practice. Like if you ask me, are you holy? I'm not answering the question, well, about what God says about me. I can say, well, I am right this minute. I am today. Like it's just like when I you know, I always bring my wife into this because she loves me to mention her name, but, um, you know, just like I said I do to her when I married her, I have to say that every day in one way or form or another. I have to say it through the dishes, through the sheets, not the sheets. That just got weird. (laughs) Sorry. There's my wife going out the door. (laughs) That is not what I meant. You bunch of sick people. All right. We're in church for crying out loud. All right, through what I meant is making the bed, <laughs> not in the sheets or whatever, you weirdos. All right, next. All right, so in the same way, it's, I have to choose Jesus every day, every minute. Holiness is a practice. And so, but, and when I fail, when I mess up, 
I have to go back to what Cassie said, that identity. I have to, you know, I think a lot of us, if we want to become more holy and live a more holy life, we've got to identify what are the lies that we keep going back to. You know, it's not, you're not just what you think about, it's you are what you think about yourself because we like to live congruent lives. And if you think of yourself as a shamed sinner, you will find ways to live that out. And so I think that we have to remember, like I found myself repenting to the Lord the other day and I just, just, I had to like not sit in my shame. In Christ, you're no longer condemned. And I had to basically like just own it, like own it with the words. First, I had to say where I was, right? So we have to take accountability. This is what I was thinking. This is what I'm doing. This, whatever that is, we have to be honest with ourselves. Where are you? You've got to get, you can't change if you don't get honest with where you are. So I think we have to do that. And we have to repent. We have to go to the Lord and repent. And then we, in some ways, we just have to walk it out as if he just said that I'm his son and he sings over me and he's proud to call me a father. I'm going to go live like that's true right now, even though it sure doesn't feel like it. So I think repentance and then walking and not letting shame drive the bus. Like, okay, shame, I see you're here. I acknowledge you, but you're not in charge and you don't get to drive this bus. That's great. I don't know if that really, you go do something better. (laughs) Oh yeah, by the way, I wanted to say something. A minute ago, you were talking about pro league and minor leagues. When I read Corinthians, it almost sounds like he's saying the pro people are the single people. Because I will say this, and like you look at it, and it's just like if you can't control yourself, fine, get married, right? Yeah, that's true. I mean, so to me, it's like you're like the pro that needs to like be giving us lessons right now because you're like anyway. I just wanted to say that you're the pro. I'm the minor league. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Before you, before you talk, uh, before you weigh in, I want to also talk about, like, would you weigh in, what is community, what's community involvement within this? Um, when I mess up, when I do something wrong, when I, when, I, when I fail to meet, where does community come into? Can you speak to that? And anybody can go. Jim. Yeah, I think it's, it's absolutely required. Like, if whatever's hiding in the dark doesn't see the light, it's going to stay dark. You got to bring it out. You got to let people know what's going on in your life. And I think for me, like as a single guy, before I got married, I had accountability partners where I was just teaming up with a group of guys and we were like holding each other accountable. And we were walking through the battle that we were together. And when I got married, my accountability partner is now my wife. And I'm grateful for that. Um, But that is absolutely a critical component because without community shame thrives and that's the last thing you want so that's what i'll say about that i would love to say something real quick about that um i i remember being in my room and saying god forgive me forgive me i messed up again i messed up again and i felt the that that sorrow have you guys felt that before? Like there's a real sorrow to it. And I'm like, forgive me. And it's like, I forgive you, but I want you to be healed. And so I went into this scripture in James 5, 16. The Bible says that we are to confess our faults one to another so that we may be healed. And he said, you can be forgiven by yourself, but healing happens in community. There's something about like, like even... Healthy sexuality becoming a lot more available when you have just healthy relationships. Like asexual, asexualized relationships, just friendships. Like I have brothers and I have sisters and I have friends and I'm close to people and I have intimacy with people. And I think we even have a hard time with that in the church to like, like a brother and a sister relationship at times because of the over-sexualized culture that we live in. But, but we need it. Like, we, we need that. 
And so I think that community is huge. And another thing I want to say that I, when I was listening to Chris, and it was so good about repentance, repenting quickly. Um, repentance not being just this event or a salvation thing, but a lifestyle for us. And obviously that happens a lot with the act of sin, but also uh, um, that's not just for when you're single. I, like if you do get married or if you are married, like there's repentance there too. Yeah. Like to be honest with you guys, there are times and there has been times where I've gone to cast and I'm like, I've, I've looked at something too long and I shouldn't have done it. And this is not okay. And I'm sorry. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. yeah. I think the idea of community and accountability partners or something is really actually, I think it's a gift from the Lord. Um, but I think I'll say this, and maybe some of you disagree, and maybe we'll talk later. Um, but a community, an accountability partner should not be, if I meet with them for an hour, an hour of only of confession, a confession of what I did wrong and a beating up of self for some sort of weird, like, okay, I beat on myself a lot. I feel really bad for what I did. Now I'm not going to go do it anymore. Like, that doesn't help. Like, there should be, I would say, a large portion of a conversation with an accountability partner where we are exhorting one another to who we actually are in Christ and saying, no, actually, yes, you fell short, but that doesn't actually change your identity. It actually, you just fell short in a moment. Get back up. This is the vision that the Lord is calling you to, and I'm going to walk this path with you. That's what an accountability partner is, okay? And so I think sometimes we got that, like, Maybe in my childhood, I got, we got that wrong. My, I, I got that wrong. I don't know. Yeah, and it can become a crutch. Um, yeah. Would you guys stand with me? Yeah. Yeah. Somebody told me to look at my phone. The QR code is not working. You can still submit questions online by going to hopechurch.net slash events under healthy sexuality. Thank you, Misty. She's amazing. Yeah. Jesus, could you just, could everybody, I just invite you to hold out your hands in front of you. Jesus, you have laid out a path in front of us. And you didn't just say, have at it, go for it. <laughs> you can figure it out on the way. But Jesus, you walked that path and you are walking that path right now with us currently. And so I just pray over every individual in the room and where they are and what they're dealing with and what they're going through. I pray that what, what Psalms 101 says, I pray that you would spend your time pondering the way of the blameless path, that you would ponder the blameless way. Jesus, help us as Pastor Gary would say, not to be so fixed on navel-gazing of my own, my own limitations and my own wrongdoings and my own things. Like, but my eyes would just be transfixed on Jesus. That my eyes would be fixed on the one, the Holy One. And by one degree of glory to the next, you are transforming us into your likeness. So Jesus, we receive your grace, we receive your power to walk the path that you have called us to walk. In Jesus' name, we receive that. Strengthen our knees, strengthen our feet. Give us the due diligence to actually guard our eyes.
and let holiness be our pursuit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah, she you guys give us a way? Hey, just a... Uh, just a few notes before we go. Uh, all throughout Wednesday, we're going to be sending some time, all the Wednesdays in the month of May. Uh, we're going to be spending some time in this conversation. Um, there's going to be different weeks where we're going to be hitting on different topics. And I would say scan the QR code, but obviously don't do that. Uh, but you can go to hopechurch.net. And I think it would really help us form the conversations as well, like we did tonight, um, into what you guys want to hear with the conversations that you feel like uh, we, we, we need to be having as well. And so we love you guys. We will see you on Sunday. Have a good week. Enjoy May Day, if that's a thing. Uh, so have a good one, guys.